Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I meant to put this video out earlier when the stock was kind of stuck around the 13, 14, 15 dollar range. I didn't intend on putting it up now after you know the stock had just rallied quite a bit in the last few days. Um, but I'm only able to record on Fridays. So yeah, that's, that's the thing. So getting to the main point, um, there's been a lot of talk after Phil Town publicly announced that he had sold a portion of his heritage holdings. I'll tell you honestly that uh, his reasoning did actually impact my thinking quite a bit. It brought to light a huge blind spot that I had just previously missed. Even Guy Spears' recent talk at MOI, it really expanded my thinking about Seritage's investment. This is why it's fantastic to have Guru investors as you know fellow shareholders. I'm going to go through what my thoughts were when I was buying into Seritage what my return expectations were, and how it has fared since then. I'll touch upon the short interest, and finally, what exactly did Phil Town say that introduced a probability that I had previously not accounted for. So, when buying into Seritage, I saw a company that was at a market cap far below the assets that it held. Even if it were to pay off the entire debt through the sale of assets, the equity holders would still have a margin of safety since the company was selling around $400 million or so. The total debt was around $1.6 billion and the approximate value of the assets that the, the properties was around $2.7 billion or so. Now, a key insight that really made me buy heavily into the company was the fact that Berkshire Hathaway had decided to defer the interest payments when they could have very easily just captured Seritage outright through bankruptcy. I really, really, really don't think that the market appreciates the significance of that amendment in the term loan agreement. It basically told me that this company cannot go bankrupt because it's got one debt holder in the form of Berkshire Hathaway, and this debt holder is not looking to take over the entire company. I was quite happy to hear that even Guy Spear shared the same view at the MOI talk because I'm not some big investor. So when someone who's like far more knowledgeable about investing in life in general, reaffirms my thought, it does give me a pretty good sense of relief. In my view, the company was going to sell around 50% of its assets to redevelop the best properties. That was pretty much the plan since the spin-off happened from Sears. The thing with Seritage is that if it executes its plan perfectly, it looks worse in the short term because the money is being pumped into the redevelopment and the rental income that's generated is coming through pretty slowly. But when it has executed its plan in its entirety, the company could be generating more rental income than its present market cap. I bought into Seritage with the intention that I wouldn't even look at it until 2023 at least, or at least until the current projects that are in the redevelopment pipeline come online. Getting approvals from local communities is a process that takes time. It's not easy at all. As a shareholder in the business, as the business owner, um, one has to realize that and approach this investment with that mindset. This is what I was telling myself back when I was buying into the company. One of the most important things about Seritage is that previously the margin of safety lied in the price of the stock. But in three to five years, the margin of safety will lie in the quality of the assets that it holds. Let's take a look at the stock. The fact is that the stock price is forward looking. So in terms of return expectations, the stock has been a 2x so far in just a few months. This is a pretty good return. In terms of the short interest, it's quite high at 40%. This is a point that I had mentioned earlier, but I highly doubt that we are going to see um, the kind of rally with Seritage, similar to what we saw with like GameStop or any of the other high short interest stocks. I'm thinking that those who are short Seritage would know better at this point, but I may be wrong on that. Getting to what Phil Tan had to say. Now, I was not aware that Berkshire had the capability of replacing the entire top management. What this insight made me realize is that there's a probability of Seritage being acquired. This is something that I'd never really thought of. It never really occurred to me because of whatever reason. And I feel a bit stupid about that. There are so many potential acquirers for the assets that Seritage con like, currently controls. We could have Amazon come in and just buy the entire company for like three to four billion dollars and turn all the properties into distribution centers because of the current prime locations that these outlets are in. We could also have another REIT that just comes in and just acquires the entire 
portfolio outright and integrates it into its portfolio. There's a reason that I don't see this as a good outcome and it's more of a risk. It's because Seritage could be a long-term cash cow that pays a substantial dividend yield on cost, especially for those who are able to get in at the right valuation. I wouldn't be happy in a scenario even though we would have made like maybe 5x to 7x because the long-term potential that we could earn from Seritage would be kind of lost out on. Either way, I'm still holding on to my Seritage shares, just waiting and watching, letting the entire redevelopment story play out. At this point, I might even be happy to average up on the position. There's a lot less uncertainty about the company now. Let me know your thoughts about Seritage, if you are a shareholder, and what is your perspective on what the future of the company is. I hope that you like this video and thank you for watching.